This is the best lens I've used in years. I don't say that reluctantly. I genuinely was blown away when I got this 70 to 200. To add some color around this, I have owned the 100 to 400 GM and I've had a lot of the primes. I had the 135 F1.8, which is actually something I returned so I could get this. They announced this like the week after I purchased that lens and I couldn't be happier. This has been such an amazing lens for everything I do. Anything you wanna do for travel, portraits, hiking, the weight of this, the internal zoom, like they really just nailed this out of the park. Now I have used RF glass in the past. I owned the Canon R5 for a while to play with that system. The 28 to 70 F2 was still to this day one of my favorite lenses. That said, I'm so happy I ended up finally deciding to just stick with Sony and go all in. And so to contrast the RF 70 to 200 with this, Obviously that's gonna be a shorter lens until you zoom, at which point the weight is gonna be off. From what I've heard, it's not as balanced. This thing is lighter weight, focuses just as fast, if not faster, um, especially when you pair it with something like the A1. All around, this has just been a great, great lens to use. Add to that the fact that you can simply just take this guy, throw it on here, and so now you've got a 140 to 400 F5.6 constant with an internal zoom. Yes, these are expensive, 550 bucks, but it's built very well, comes with this probably over-engineered case. And just, you basically have two lenses now. You've got 140 to 400, and then you've got 70 to 200 F2.8. Like for traveling, for hiking, for out and about, it's such a dynamic setup to be able to do that. So I've had this lens for a month now. I've been using it for over a month. That included some travels to the East Coast. That included shooting some friends doing a lot of outdoor work and just really getting a sense of how good this lens is. And again, I, I stand behind it. If you're on the fence, if you have the 100 to 400 and you're thinking about selling it for this, go for it. If you have the old 70 to 200 and you're thinking about upgrading to this, I don't wanna give you too much info there because I didn't use that one. However, from what I've seen, when you take a pound off and you add faster focusing speeds. If it's a lens you've used a lot, then yeah, you probably are worthwhile trying to get a good trade-in value on it and upgrading. If you're happy with it right now, don't upgrade. On the downside of this lens, the only thing I can say which is gonna come with any type of telephoto lens is that, yeah, you do have to hold it pretty still. Granted, it has OSS, and then you're gonna have IBIS on most of the Sony cameras, depending which one you're pairing it with. I've still seen some photos when I do have to stop down the shutter speed do get a little blurry, especially at that 200 range or when you're adapting. That said, it's something you just gotta be aware of and make sure you use it. That is where, again, to contrast to RF real quickly, the stabilization on the R5 was just outrageous, but it was too much for video for me. However, handheld photos, things like that, I was amazed. I was holding half second exposures. You're not gonna be able to do that on this guy. In terms of focusing, in terms of tracking, I took a bunch of bird photos as examples. It was kind of interesting. When I'm using area focus, zone focus, it actually had trouble with even in bird mode on the A1, finding the eye of the bird. Sometimes it would go for the wings, sometimes it took a little bit. If you lock onto a subject with actual tracking focus, it does very well. But if you're gonna use like spot focus or touch focus, then every time I did that, it would immediately lock onto the eye of the bird, however small they were they just have to be in a decent portion of the frame. When you look at everything they include on the lens, it's more than I'm gonna need, but you've got an aperture ring. I haven't really used that so far. I do use it on my primes, but on these types of zooms, I'm typically just gonna be using these for shutter and aperture if I need to adjust on the fly. So I leave it in auto, you can lock it. And then you've got basically all the other switches you're used to. You can change how the focal range is gonna do. If you don't need the full range, you can hone it in. So that way it's not gonna hunt as much. Haven't had issues with hunting either way. I pretty much just leave it in full. Full-time DMF is kind of interesting. So this basically grabs focus and then you can use your ring to hone in exactly where you want. I use that a little bit, but don't use that a ton. Auto manual focus, I do use a lot. Stabilization, honestly, I pretty much just always leave on. When you have the IBIS, it is gonna crop potentially in video, so that's something to be aware of. And then modes one, two, and three, depending on what you wanna dial in there. You got three buttons on the lens. All are gonna do the exact same thing. It really just depends which way you're holding the camera. I kinda wish these could do different things, but I get why they all stay the same. In terms of front of the lens then, you're gonna have a 77 millimeter thread on here. It works, like the 50 prime I'm using is actually a 72. That one's a little bit awkward. Most of the other ones I'm using with 2.8 apertures are gonna be an 82. So I'm just using step up rings for the most part if I need to do that. The build quality of this, I know again, it's $550, but when you consider the fact that you're saving yourself from buying a whole nother lens, and even if you did buy the other lens, this is gonna be a lot more portable. That to me is completely worth it. 
I would love to pay less, but the fact that the image quality is still gonna be good when paired with this, that's gonna be widely usable, and it's so nice to just have this in your pocket, have it in your bag, and be able to throw it on on the fly. I do wanna talk about macro a little bit on here as well, because frankly, this is a great macro lens, which I didn't expect, or a use case. Now, depending on how much you're zoomed in, it actually is gonna change a bit how far you have to be from the subject, so something to be aware of, but I haven't seen any issues. Even at 70 or 200, I can still get close enough. It actually makes the compression pretty nice and you have some range to play with there. Why did I sell the 135 F 1.8 to get this? Honestly, with what I do, a lot of the hiking, a lot of outdoors, having the dynamic ability of this zoom, really the 135 did some amazing shots. It was such a unique focal length plus aperture, but you really had to focus on framing. You couldn't move around. I'm out trying to shoot wildlife, I'm trying to do landscapes, and I don't really need that extra 1.0 of aperture when I can have a huge dynamic zoom range, the adaptability, and everything else. So if you were kind of weighing those options, unless you're like full-time portrait, and you can basically set your subject somewhere and take those photos very specifically, then maybe the 135 does make sense. I would opt that you go for this, pay the extra money, and just have a much more dynamic lens in your bag. Now one cool thing I found recently I have the Mavic 3 and I'm using the Low Pro Photo Sport for a lot of my travels. And you can even stack the Mavic on top and still close the bag. It's tight. It does work though. As you can see, you've got both stacked. You're still gonna be able to zip up your bag. So that for me was just kind of icing on the cake once I figured out how well that fit in there. So that's gonna do it. Honestly, I just wanted to provide all the info I could. I've been using this for a little over a month now. They actually shipped this to me right around Thanksgiving. I got it early for some reason. I thought it came out mid-December. So using it, if you're on the fence again, I give it a thumbs up. It's a great lens. I'll put links below if you wanna grab one. Hopefully they'll be in stock soon enough if they're not right now. Let me know if you have any tests you want me to do with this lens in the future. Throw them in the comments below. Any questions you have, hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more of this content. As always, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.